Let's take a look at one of the incidents of Jesus' uh, ministry that reveals a great deal about Satan's demons. And um, this is in Luke 8. And we're going to pick, I'm sorry, this is my Mark. I'm sorry, Mark, the first 13 verses of Mark. And uh, interesting, I uh, this is very interesting because it's one encounter that Jesus had with demons, but this one encounter reveals a great deal of information about demons. And they're out there, boy. Don't don't uh, pretend that they're not. Okay, so I'm at uh, Mark 5 here, and the first 13 verses here, and uh, a lot of information. So we're going to go ahead and cover this because it's worth it, because it'll tell us a great deal about uh, about this world here. Okay, uh, here we are in Mark 5 and uh, King James. Uh, and they came over unto the other side of the sea, that's the Sea of Galilee, into the country of the uh, Gadarenes, and it says here in the King James. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. You don't, you don't see the power of demons there <laughs> a little more. Verse 4, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried out with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding and all the devils besought him saying send us into the swine that we may enter into them and forthwith Jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea they were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea well, that's the story I'm, I'm going to analyze these verses because it tells a lot about demons Okay, and by the way, uh, Luke, being a physician, he happens to mention that that uh, he noticed this thing. The other time. He knows this guy was naked all the time. By the way, uh, that's something Luke mentions in his gospel in the parallel passage, and the others don't mention. Okay, let's see what we learn about demons. Number one, demons are powerful. Now, they put irons on those guys like he just broke them like they were rags, right? They, you know, he had you know irons pretty strong. Okay, so this is naked man. You know, he didn't have any. And he, I think, also the work. Nothing could restrain this guy. So, never, ma- you know, demons are powerful. So don't mess around. I mean, they're a lot more powerful than human beings. So be careful. I mean, you know, just be aware. Just be aware of this fact. Okay. Another fact: demons are fascinated with death-related environments. Now, was this guy running around the malls? That's the uh, the markets, or the used car lots, the used camel lots, <laughs> or the horse race tracks or camel race tracks? Notice. These de- the demons hung around tombs. Of course, dead people are in tombs, graveyards. Ever wonder why so many horror films in which demon activities portrayed are centered around death-related environments? Isn't it fascinating? You know, we have Halloween. <laughs> yeah, honor the demonic world. By the way, that's scary. Uh, by the way, uh, Halloween is a celebration in honoring the demonic world. You may know that. They oh, so cute. Our kids get to wear costumes. Mary had take her to. Yeah, was the thing. Yeah, the demons came around, and you either you bought them off with an offering, a gift of some kind, or they ripped, ripped, ripped off your house, <laughs> tore off a couple bedrooms, ripped off the roof, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> and we think it's so cute. But I remember, so you know, demons are fascinated with death. Now, interesting, demons are spirit. We'll see here. But notice this: why are, demons are just around death-related things. So, oh, we're going to show horror films tonight. Oh, great! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Want to scare your kids before they go to bed? Yeah, watch a stupid horror film, right? Ridiculous! I'm just saying. Notice that they're always around death-related environments. You know, we have Dracula and we have Frankenstein and all kinds of stuff, right? 
So be careful. They, they don't go around their areas, so they're around uh, death environments. Interesting, okay? Another fact, that when demons possess a human being, and they do, so they go, oh, no, uh, you, know, he says, you know, little Tommy here has 14 personalities. Oh, that's great. Oh, let's get the psychiatrist and, and psychologist in here. We're going to interview this kid, and we'll identify all 14. Oh, it's so beautiful. I mean, what a bunch of garbage, right? Child, children, adults can be possessed by demons. And But notice, when they do, they they get these people doing weird things. Here's this guy running around naked. He's howling and bruising himself and making all kinds of weird noises, right? Mm-hmm. The demons inside him are doing that, right? So they, when they when a demon possesses somebody, you're going to see weird behaviors. Another fact. Interesting, demons know the identity and status of anyone with the Holy Spirit. Notice that? This is an important point. You know, Satan knows who the real Christians are, those called the New Covenant, all the fakes. All those fakes out there, all the millions of people thinking they're Christians. Good luck. Satan knows which ones are real or not. Notice. So here they knew exactly who Jesus Christ was. Jesus, they called him, you know, the Son of the Most High God. They know exactly. You know, the uh, Israelites couldn't figure it out, but the demons knew, right? <laughs> yeah, they know exactly. So don't forget, uh, interesting, when times of trouble are going to come, it's not the fake Christians that are going to be persecuted. It's going to be the, the real ones because Satan knows who they are. They know who we are, right? Well, fine. They know who we are. But just be aware. They know an interesting. So they're not going to go after uh, the people who are not real Christians. And they're duped and faked. Oh, he's got them already. Satan's got them already, right? They're not headed for the kingdom of God. They're not headed for the first resurrection. They're not being called at this time. And so he's not going to waste your time on them. He's going to go after those who uh, he, they know have the Holy Spirit. And they know who has the Holy Spirit. So, uh, obviously, you know, the Christians have the Holy Spirit. That's the definition. And they know who they are, right? Okay. Uh, now, interesting, demons are afraid of people of the Holy Spirit. You know that? Because the Holy Spirit's power. They knew that Jesus was given the Holy Spirit without measure, and they were scared. And they're quaking in their boots and frightened because they're in the presence of a human being. Jesus was a human being. I don't know if I get that. He had the Holy Spirit. So they recognized his power and his, his status as they called a person to the new covenant, right? He was the first one, the first born of many brethren, right? And notice, they know that he is a powerful being here. But interesting, and so notice what they're saying to Jesus. Is, is this the time, Jesus? Let's go back and pick up that one verse, because interesting, with the, with the phraseology of this said that, uh, here we go. Uh, look at that. I adjure you by God, do not torment me. Don't torment me, because they know what's going to happen. They're going to be tormented. And so notice, uh, the thing is, they don't know when it's going to happen. See, <laughs> that's interesting. They know when they're going to, that's their end, but they don't know when it's going to come. When is it? Was it going to happen then? They don't know. So is this the time, Jesus? Yeah. And that's what they're asking, right? <laughs> you know, I believe, my opinion, is that suicide and murder are crimes motivated and inspired by Satan and his demons. My belief. My belief. And he's, suicide is totally unnatural. Nobody wants to be destroyed by their own power. I mean, no, they want, people want to live. That's the natural human way. So, to kill themselves, hey, that's an idea from Satan, right? Don't don't ever underestimate. Well, God said, a bruised reed I will not break. So it's not God that is making people feel suicidal. That's exactly right. God would never do anything like that. That's anytime you see that kind of thinking, that that's one of the fruits of uh, saying the devil. So then we learned that just one passage told us a great deal about demons. And interesting... You, we see that human beings have more than one demon. Here, this man had 2,000 demons. Mary Magdalene would have seven demons, right? Luke 8, 2 mentions that Mary Magdalene had seven demons cast out of her. You know, and, and this is heavy stuff. Demons in possession here. So anyway, 